What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Chantal has done a live stream. She comes online, admits she's a mess, starts singing Kung Fu Fighting. These live streams, I will offer to you, are super hectic. She complains about being held up, and that's her quote, in the hotel room. And for reference, we've done three hours of live streams in the last day after doing three total live stream hours in a week. She then covers the screen up to put on a shirt to cover her attire, and she says this is based on the sleeves of what she's wearing needing to be corrected. But she had just shown so much of her wrists the other day. She admits she was not ready to go live before coming back and complaining of the lighting in the room and the makeup issues. She said Sala has went to the barber, but we also learned that it's 9 p.m. So despite yesterday's procrastination, she now says she feels good and she can go out. But she didn't go to his haircut, which is strange. She admits they are still in Thailand, and she says she's tired when the chat indicates she appears to be on something, if you will. Now, someone offered for her to use hemorrhoid cream to correct the issues under her eyes, which is not good advice if you've ever looked into that. She says even Sala complained about the humidity today and sent her a text about how bad it is. She says that this is an undershirt, not an overshirt, because someone honestly asks what on earth she's wearing, and she says that this is normally what she wears under her clothing, but the fact that she just removed her clothing to show herself in this kind of makes me think that her clothing isn't comfortable for her to wear anymore, combined with the fact that we've seen a lot of tightness in the buttons, and we've also seen a lot of buttons that have been undone. So she reiterated that it is Sala getting his hair cut by a man, and that it is Sala who has a beard that grows very fast, and that she never liked beards before Sala. And I find it a little odd that Sala didn't film the haircut. I mean, why wouldn't he go out and show himself going to a traditional barber in the area? I mean, I understand some people will say, well, why bother? But let's be fair. I mean, that's something of substance, especially when you look at the last five hours of random walking he's done in four days. At least this would have some type of objective to film. The chat comes out and asks her why she can't schedule live streams for them or give them reasonable titles. And she says she misses doing random streams. But the reality is this is the VIB is telling her they want to know when she's going to be online so they can interact. They ask her later in the stream to go live at midnight Eastern time. And she says she will attempt to do this. Now, 15 minutes into this, she's yawning. The chat asks her for a TMI story, she refuses, but then jokes about a woman, literally, jokes about a woman being killed by an elephant, and then admits that she shouldn't have made a joke about it, tries to dial back the fact that she laughed at it, and then just carries on to, quote, so many things that she wants to eat. She cites that when she's cooking from home, she can add cheese to meals, she can eat for less, she can control the portion sizes, and I think at that point, most people thought portion size as in smaller portions, but she actually meant larger ones. She reiterates during the stream she's tired, that she has to get up early tomorrow. She talks about the need to keep editing this vlog that should be out today. She's asked her least favorite food, which I thought was interesting. I don't know that anyone had asked her that before. And she says it's undercooked salmon. She says that her online issues annoy her but it is not going to impact her going back to Canada. And then she starts referencing reaction channels. When someone asks her why she doesn't like salmon, she says because, now understand, this is foodie beauty. Salmon can be fishy. She talks about horror movies they want to watch and genuinely seems disinterested in doing anything but just using the chat there to pass time. She says she filmed the mukbang. Now understand, she filmed the mukbang, but is unsure if she is going to upload it because she made a mistake. However, and I'll try to cover this after this video, interestingly enough, she had put up a double pasta feast and now has a bag of chips with her. At the 27 minute mark, she thinks Sala comes back into the room, but he does not. She then goes on to talk about how she's concerned with her health and then wants to do a parody of The Shining, with a movie called The Beezing, where cheese is the focal point. She goes back into this rant of kind of subpar food she orders and the awesome food she can make. She reminisces about an awesome chicken parm she made. She says that she just needs to do that, just to go back on OMAD, 
be a lot easier if she just had one portion of good food. Someone later on corrects her that she said meatloaf had been her favorite, and she just kind of laughs it off as loving both. Someone asks if she'd reached out to Trisha Paytas, and there really wasn't any context to this, but she says that she didn't. She then randomly realizes her phone is down to 15%, meaning this was 100% unplanned and clearly done only once Salah had left. She later says that she doesn't feel like she's morbidly obese, and there's a large discussion that's had about her jealousy. She gets called out for admitting that when Sala went places to take pictures of where he was, and she says that's normal, that's something they like to do. Someone brings up the fact that she could use his phone's GPS to track him, and she states she doesn't know how to do that before admitting that it would be okay for her to do that if Sala would just agree to it. The chat then brings up her pretty well-established dislike for all other women, but she kind of defends against this and says that, you know, Sala, based on his culture, kind of has some differences of what he can do that we might not be familiar with, and then talks about the fact that he could not get a massage from a female, only a male. She says this is protective jealousy and goes back, honestly, goes back to Natter cheating on her and admitting that with Natter, there was a toxic jealousy. Sala enters the chat with about 10 minutes left, but it's odd because she expected him home nearly 30 minutes prior. And th this goes back to Natter. The chat asks why he can't send a photo of the barbershop, you know, where he is, and just stay tuned for a moment because she then reiterates that she really wants just a healthy snack each day. She wants to do a podcast. She wants to do an entertainment hour. Organized content. Organized content in the content room and be able to cook. She says she needs this because she's getting bored with herself and she needs to put effort into her content. She then goes and talks about how competitive the space is when it comes down to channels that do those type of videos. And she says she knows she should be doing more effort-wise and then reiterates that she feels a cooking show is what is needed. Now, again, as I said, if you actually follow the timeline of events, Sala was expected back by her 30 minutes prior. She didn't object and say, wow, Sala's back early. She just said, thought Sala was back. 20 minutes later, he appears in the chat, and it doesn't seem like they have much of a conversation. And then all of a sudden, he kind of barges into the room, if you will. Now, he returns to her with a donut, and talks about how busy the barbershop was. She reiterates how handsome he is. And I just also want to share with you the passion she has for the donut. He gives her a small donut and a coconut sauce, which looked good. She is more passionate about the time she spent with that donut than she was the entire hour that preceded this that she was in her video with her members. And I think that really stood out to me. You know, she has people there, if you will, kind of paying for the privilege to be with her and communicate with her and spend time with her. And, and she really was adamant that this donut was the most important thing. So I mentioned in my videos, one of the things that I wanted to do with you guys was highlight some of your top comments. So I wanted to go ahead and do that. Last video, Emerald Sky said... Someone's lonely and high while her dude's in a red room. Very fitting, and I think a lot of people agree with that. And then, we'll just refer to him as Dill, said, Chantal and Sala have the combined IQ of a jumping shrimp. Them playing chess is something that would be fascinating to watch. And I had not thought about that initially, but I could not agree more. Seeing them play chess against each other may be the most entertaining live stream they could do for the foreseeable future. I will be back as soon as I can with the mukbang, and if you leave a comment in this video and it's the highest rated one, I will try to include it. No, I will include it. I'm not going to pull a Chantal. I will include it in my next video. Appreciate you watching this. Be back as soon as I can with more content.